All right, what's up, everybody? You are watching Spectre React, and today we are reviewing Loki episode three. Here we go. This episode was titled Lamentus, and we see Loki and Sylvie get transported to a planet that we've previously seen in the comics, uh, and Star Lord and Quasar travel to this planet. So what do you think of that reference? I'm really glad you found that because I was really wondering where they, where I've heard that name before and now I kind of remember it. I wasn't a fan of this episode, I gotta say. Like, I can't believe that in a six episode series, in my opinion, this episode was completely filler. How do you put a filler episode in a six episode series? I just, I can't comprehend that. In my opinion, I don't really view it as filler, but I can sympathize with people that do. I thought it was pretty character driven and we got a lot of different lore bits scattered throughout. Yeah. Uh, it was character driven for sure. Let's just start from the top, I guess. It, I think the episode, the hook of the episode, at least when they were in a bar where Sylvie and that TV age and were in a bar, I thought that was very interesting, especially because it led into the reveal that the TVA agents are actually not created by the timekeepers, but instead they're just variant people. But the rest of the episode was a lot of filler. Like, I didn't like how a lot of the questions weren't pointed questions from Loki. From what I've seen of Loki, he would have asked more questions than just like the very basics. And, you know, we learned maybe six new things in this episode and like four of them were about Loki, the one that we already know. I mean, there's a difference between like learning a ton of lore on like a wiki article and watching a show that transports you into another world. And I thought this show, or at least this episode, excelled at the latter. Yeah, I can understand that opinion. Well, a lot of my complaints stem from the, you know, the, the, the lapse in continuity at a, at a lot of times. The fight scenes, they weren't great, uh, especially when in episode two, random people are just kicking Loki's ass. Um, I wasn't a fan of how, you know, this, the Alabama guy from episode two was just throwing Loki around. Also, one week ago, Loki was throwing Captain America around. That doesn't make sense to me. I thought he was being amped by Sylvie, but turns out Sylvie can't fight either. Yeah, I'm, I mean... It was impressive to see that, you know, Sylvie, unlike Loki, wasn't taught a lot of this magic and, and she discovered it herself. So, you know, kudos to her character for coming up with that. Yeah, but she's not as good at magic. Like from episode two, I felt like at least that Loki, like Lady Loki or Sylvie rather, was a lot better at magic than Loki was. And now we're getting to see that, you know, Loki is much better at magic all of a sudden. It just the continuity didn't add up to me. And then the entire episode, in my like, at least again, in my opinion, the entire episode was just them searching for a charger for the for the TVA pad because, and again, like I'm I'm gonna sound like cinema sins here, but you're telling me that the entire episode they just wanted to look for a charger and the TVA iPads are like above a twenty percent low battery message, like we find out that it's dead when it's dead. I mean, talk about antiquated technology. As I said, you know, time works in mysterious ways or whatever, right? So maybe they. They hadn't gotten that iOS update on their iPad or something. Who knows? Yeah, they, they better they better get that iOS update. Well, on a more optimistic note, I think the aesthetic of this episode was awesome. They did a great job kind of getting that futuristic, post-apocalyptic setting and, and making it in a, like a believable fashion. But at the same time, there were some issues with the CGI, especially that planet coming down and crashing onto Lamentis. So, you know, I view my gold standard for VFX as Rogue One, and this wasn't really up to par with that sort of stuff, even though... ILM was helping out with these effects. Yeah, I, I did. I did like the effects. And again, but there was another discrepancy with that, as you said. Uh, I think the scene where Loki and uh, Sylvie get blasted by that lady who's like posted up with a gun right outside her door. I thought that was really entertaining in comparison. Yet still, it was really weird how, you know, Loki, the god of mischief, is getting outsmarted again. I mean, I think the, the, the point of that scene was if you use deception or brute force... You're not going to get your way, but if you actually like talk to the person and sympathize with them, then maybe you'll you'll be on your way. Yeah. Uh, again, on that note, sympathetic. Like uh, we're seeing a lot more of a sympathetic Loki, and again, the continuity. Yes, Loki that we knew around the time of Endgame would be very sympathetic. He would say things like, "Oh my God, people are going to die," but Loki in, you know, Avengers One, he doesn't give a shit. Like people are going to die, whatever. So again, the continuity messed with my head here. Um, also, uh, one other thing that bothered me was that Loki getting on the train, he had no problem turning himself into a guard, but he couldn't have just produced two tickets for them. Yeah. He did the fireworks instead, which I mean, I don't know if that was like a glitch in his magic or something, but I don't know. What was, yeah. I don't know what was going on with that. He, I guess he was also as guardians get drunk apparently now after all we've seen from the last, you know, 10 years worth of movies is that as guardians don't really get drunk. Maybe that, that 
2077 wine is just crazy strong. Yeah, maybe. Maybe they've just figured out. Maybe they just add that as Guardian stuff to all these wines now. But I mean, to your point about like character continuity, I think this Loki isn't exactly the same one we saw in Avengers because he's clearly learned some stuff about his future. And maybe that like set him on the right path to, to improvement. Well, there is there is then the debate of whether are, can a, if you watch a movie reel of your life, are you going to improve? Are you going to show the same amount of growth as if you lived that? I'm not saying it's exact. It's exactly the same. I mean, there there is some elements of his Avengers one counterpart, I I guess. But I mean, it's kind of like midway between them, you know. Yeah, this episode was just for me. I was so, you know, I was so bothered by some of these things that were just going on that I just couldn't focus on the episode like itself. I couldn't, I couldn't like. I saw the aesthetic that was really cool and all that, and some of the scenes were very entertaining. But again, just like this episode, just it killed me with how many things they they took away from how the MCU usually is, I guess. I mean, Feige, Feige's executive producing this, so maybe he, like... I don't really know what went on behind the scenes. Maybe there were some rewrites. Potentially. Well, the good thing we did get to see... Well, I think... Here, here's what I'll say. If if this episode will... This is how this episode will get redeemed, in my opinion. If... You know how Sylvie says that some people are trickier to... Uh, some people are trickier to, like, enchant? Yeah. And so you have to put them through, like, a whole fantasy... If this is a whole fantasy, because you know how the episode ended, right? I've seen those theories, yeah. So, like, do you think they're still on the train and Loki's just kind of like making Sylvie wait, so to speak? No, I think, I think this whole like thing, this whole lamentous experience, or at least from one part of the lamentous experience, is a fantasy to try to manipulate Loki. Because look at where they ended. They ended on a cliffhanger where they're actually stuck. Are they actually stuck, or is this just a, you know, figment of Loki's imagination that's being put onto him by Sylvie. Yeah, I mean, I think that would make this a really interesting episode, and I'm honestly gunning for that theory to be realized. Yeah, me too. That that's how this episode will get redeemed, in my opinion, because I feel like if Sylvie is in control, that would explain the lack of questioning from Loki. That would explain how Loki is getting drunk. That would explain how Loki is getting his ass kicked by lamentous guards after you know, fifteen hundred years of fighting experience. Yeah, I mean, I did think this episode was the best one so far, but at the same time, it did lose out on a lot of like the you know mind bending, time altering things that previous episodes were doing. Yeah, I think this. I have the exact opposite opinion. I think this episode was like the the least interesting one so far. But again, I'm I'm biased because I've just seen I've just been an MCU fan for so long. I guess that I just see these things and I can't I can't stand them. Yeah, maybe so. Maybe so, but anyways. Uh, I have heard that episode four and five will be very interesting, and we're going to talk about those in a leak video in the future, so stay tuned for that, and that is all we got for you right now. See you in the next one, guys.